In this week's uh, IHME analysis of the pandemic, uh, the main uh, focus, of course, is on the extraordinary surge in India uh, and perhaps other parts of South Asia. The exponential rise in cases and deaths continues uh, in India. And if in our analysis of seroprevalence surveys in India and telling us about what the infection detection rate in India has been, uh, all the state specific analyses suggest that the infection detection rate is below 5% maybe around three to 4%, meaning that the number of cases that are being detected uh, needs to be multiplied by 20 or more to get the number of infections that are occurring in India. So the number of infections right now uh, is really extraordinarily large. There's more infections happening in India than happened globally two, or th uh, two weeks ago. Uh, and we expect in our model that the number of infections driven by the surge in India, perhaps also Bangladesh and Pakistan, uh, will be reaching to the level of um, 15 million a day globally, most of which is in India. Now, the huge epidemic is like Likely to continue at least into the second week of May. But given the extraordinary volume of infection in India, we may run out of people to infect uh, pretty soon. So that our models are suggesting that transmission may start to decline in India uh, as uh, we get into the latter half of May. Elsewhere in the world, uh, in South Asia, cases have been reported, have peaked and started to come down in Bangladesh. But we think that that may be a reporting artifact from uh, the Ramadan period where fewer people may be seeking to be tested and or there may be lags in the data. So we will watch very closely the trends in Bangladesh and Pakistan. The surge in India is now going to, is spreading elsewhere in um, Nepal, in South Asia. Elsewhere in the world, uh, in South America, where the epidemic is really fundamentally driven by P1, we're seeing rising cases and deaths, but nowhere near as explosively as the uh, South Asian epidemic. Uh, it's important to consider what is the variant in the South Asian epidemic. Uh, we think it's mostly related to B1617, although sequencing data in the public domain is quite sparse for India. And there's certainly plenty of 351 and also B117 sequenced in India. But given the explosive increase in South Asia compared to Latin America, Given the high prevalence of previous infection in some states like Delhi, already 75% infected before this started to happen, it's clearly an escape variant and that makes it most likely that it's B1617. Outside of South Asia and South America, in Europe, in aggregate, cases and deaths seem to have come down slightly in the last week. But there are certainly a number of countries, Spain, um, the Netherlands, and a few others, where cases are going up, but deaths are either constant or even declining slightly. So we are perhaps seeing continued transmission related to behavioral relaxation, but the effective vaccination is enough to uh, keep the death rate constant or declining. And then in North America, uh, we're seeing continued growth of the epidemic in Canada, uh, particularly in Ontario, uh, but some suggestion that the B117 fueled increase in Michigan is reaching um, uh, you know, its peak. And so thus our, our forecast for the US are down. Uh, we've also introduced this week uh, an important change to our analysis of past infections by correcting seroprevalence data that we use to get the infection detection rate, the infection fatality rate, 
for waning um, antibody sensitivity over time. So that correction has increased the number of people who have been previously infected in the US to near to 30% from previous estimates in the low 20s. And that makes a difference to our forecasts along with uh, you know, steady progress on, on vaccination. So that's the sort of main uh, areas of uh, development in this week's assessment. Uh, but just to reiterate at the global level, what's happening in South Asia is uh, overwhelmingly driving the, the, uh, our assessment of, of the global pandemic.